Hi everyone, thanks for joining me back in the man cave. Uh, what's been happening in the world of new model Barmy? Well, um, unfortunately I had COVID. Um, so thankfully I'm over it now, but I did manage to get the um, wooden pencil case layout um, video out beforehand. So it did take me out of action for about uh, two or three weeks. Um, I did, however, manage to get the video out recently of my um, upgrade, weathering, a detail up, I suppose, on this Hornby 040 Pug in 00 scale. Uh, so take a look at that video if you haven't already. Um, but I've got uh, an exhibition booked uh, with my local club, Bogner, uh, for January 22. So I'm taking probably five layouts to that show, uh, one of which is going to be my sponge mine layout, which is the layout in a cake, which is 009. But I've only got the one loco for that, which is my budget model railways um, loco, which you might have seen me build on another video, which is kit built uh, on a Kato chassis. So I thought, really, I don't want to have that running around for the whole duration of a two-day show. Uh, it'll get worn out. So I thought I need to, need another loco. So um, I thought I'd scratch build uh, a loco body for that. So we've done an upgrade uh, and repaint. I've done a conversion already on, on my channel, which is the um, Hornby Class 6 06, which I converted to an 016.5 narrow gauge loco. Um, and I've obviously done the budget model railway kit build. I thought this time we'll do a, a, a build completely from scratch uh, to sit on another Kato uh, chassis. Um, so let's see how we got on with that. I am. Uh, I apologise that it's uh, in stills because unfortunately I lack the technical kit to video well when I'm building. I can't build well and video at the same time because I just haven't got the right rig to do it. Maybe one day I might I might invest in that, uh, but I, I, I kind of do it in piecemeal. So you'll have to bear with me, and it will be stills. Um, but please keep watching, uh, and then you'll uh, see how, how I got on. So my starting point was to do a little sketch of the kind of loco that I wanted to, to build. Um, so once I've done that, then I needed to work out what components I needed to make or cut out of plastic card in order to glue it all together. So I literally did a breakdown uh, kind of Airfix kit style uh, just to give me a starting point really. Uh, this is the chassis that it's going to go on which I think is an 11-109 something like that which I've used before they're great little chassis great runners and brilliant for these sort of builds um, so the first job was um, to cut out the bits and pieces out of plastic card, uh, which was probably the fiddliest part of the whole process. So you can see there uh, that I'd completed most of it and then started gluing the various bits and pieces onto the um, running board. Um, so yeah, that went together pretty well and I was quite happy with uh, the progress so far. That just shows a different, uh, different angle. Uh, as I say, the cutouts were the fiddliest part. You've got to have a very, very sharp knife. Um, so once I'd uh, done that, I then offered it up onto the chassis to see what it looked like with the driver figure. This is the smoke box, which is made out of a, um, a thermal uh, roll tube, which we have the tube innards for our um, credit card machines at work. And my guys at work always save them up for me because they're really useful for modelling. So I formed a piece of plastic card around that um, because it was completely circular uh, and then I've offered that up onto the um, the rest of the body there uh, hopefully that kind of looks in scale um, so the next job really was to complete the smoke box so put a chimney on it which is a piece of um, a piece of toilet cistern innards actually with a metal washer glued on the top the smoke box door is a uh, screw cover that you have on flat pack furniture. So I just drilled that out and, and pushed that in. Uh, and as you can see in the next shot, uh, that's what it looks at, like from behind. I had to cut that out um, so that would clear the uh, part of the chassis. So as I always said uh, before, never throw anything away because it's always useful for modelling. 
Um, I, I put this dome uh, thing on the top of the, um, of the tank, the boiler. Um, it just looked a bit out of scale. It's probably correct actually for a lot of narrow gauge locos. But I ended up uh, using a different one, which I used a piece of, sp of sprue and turned that in an electric drill like a lathe. So that's uh, what you see in this photo. I've also added some handrails, some detailing to the smoke box door, uh, and a couple of uh, relief valves and a whistle out of plastic scraps again from my um, scraps box. Um, so, and I've put the driver once again next to it just to check scale, making sure it still looks uh, looks correct. I've added a couple of uh, filler caps as well for the uh, water tank uh, in the top there. Uh, in this shot you can see that I've uh, filled the body underneath with uh, air gun pellets uh, to give it a bit of weight. Um, I've used this technique before um, and they weren't compressed, there was room to put the whole pellet in. I usually use spent ones. Um, then once they were all glued in, I put a plastic fillet over the top because just in case one of them came adrift, I wanted to keep them all together. I didn't want them dropping into the uh, chassis um, to obviously to avoid any damage uh, to that. So the next step was to add some valances. Um, the little steps up into the cab, I've used a cut down N-gauge Kestrel window uh, which is another technique I've used before for making steps, that's quite handy. Uh, and that just um, hides all the wheel sets. Um, so uh, yeah, quite pleased how they, uh, they turned out. Coat of primer, uh, just then unifies it. It also shows me any bits that I missed uh, that I need to fill prior to painting. Um, next stage was uh, rattle can black uh, and paint the buffer beams red and also pick out all the valving uh, in a sort of bronzy gold colour, uh, which I've done there. Now, I could leave this at this point, um, but bearing in mind it was going around a mine, albeit a sponge mine, I thought, no, that needs weathering. Uh, it's a bit boring in that black um, livery. So I thought, right, well, we need to uh, apply some weathering techniques to this. So that's what I've done here. Similar to the weathering I used on my little 040 pug, so this is Artists Oils um, in various colours, uh, just to make it look like uh, a well-worn uh, loco that's seen plenty of combat. Um, so I decided to add some detail into the cab. So this is a bit of brass wire, some plasticard. Um, anybody eagle-eyed there might notice that is one of the main oleos from an English Electric Lightning on the left-hand side. Uh, glued on there just to make up some levers and things like that um, and some gauges at the top which I've punched out uh, of plastic and here with a bit of paint um, you can see that it's relatively effective um, in fairness you can't see a lot of it um, once it's in place um, because the apertures are quite small and there's not a lot of light in there um, but I felt I needed to add the detail so you can just about see um, in this shot that it kind of finishes the cab off. Um, it did look a little bit plain without anything in there. Um, so I'm glad I did it. It was worth uh, doing and it didn't take very long. Um, to be fair, the whole build of this, actually, I tried to work it out, it's probably about 10 or 12 hours um, from start to finish. Um, so not a massive investment in time, um, but uh, it's really cutting the bits out took, took the time, to be perfectly honest. There you can see the other side with the gauges in. Uh, driver figure painted up. This is uh, once again one of the Dapol station uh, figures that I've used. So painted him up as a, a driver. Um, so it was a fiddly job um, trying to get him because I had to glue him to the, the cab sides so that he wasn't glued to the chassis. There's not a lot of clearance there. Um, so we just about managed to insert him so he didn't foul on anything with the chassis and still looked uh, reasonably uh, placed correctly. So here we have the um, loco actually on the layout uh, and yeah I think I'm quite pleased with that. I think it sits quite nicely uh, on, on the layout there. Uh, I might apply a little bit more um, weathering to that bulldozer actually before I um, go to the exhibition. It looks a bit clean compared to the loco. Um, but um, yeah all in all for my first, well it's not my first full scratch build in fairness, I did an 016.5 for the brewery layout, but uh, it's the first one in 009 uh, and in this tiny size. So uh, I'm quite happy how that turned out. Um, and it is an alternative to um, 
to buying a, a, a kit, albeit um, 3D printed or, uh, or white metal or brass. Uh, I just find it easier to, to deal with plastic. Um, so apologies once again, this is all in stills. Um, if I was videoing the build as I went, it would have been accompanied by a fair bit of swearing, um, which probably YouTube wouldn't have been very happy about. Uh, so thanks for watching, uh, and uh, I'll look forward to catching you next time. Uh, remember to please uh, like and subscribe. Cheers, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.